Have you ever wondered what's going to happen if you'll take the DJI Ready controller, which of course was heavily inspired by the TBS Tiger 2, mix it with the TBS Tiger 2 and add some jumper T-Lite Spice? Yep, you probably got it right, you'll get the Jumper T Pro, and today in this video I'm going to provide you with a quick hands-on review of this new Ready controller. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So again, in case for some reason you missed the intro, this video is going to be about the Jumper T Pro, the successor of the T-Lite, which was released about a year ago, and as far as I know, is now discontinued. Just like the T-Lite, the T-Pro features a gamepad style ergonomic design, so it's going to be especially appealing for tumbers. And here you can see what it looks like next to the DJI Ready controller, so there is a lot of resemblance between the two, the colors are almost identical, the foam factor is very similar, both are using foldable antennas, and from their backside they look pretty much the same. In addition, as for its resemblance to the TBS Tango 2, both Ready controllers feature pretty much the same foam factor, a foldable antenna, and navigating between the different options and setting up the Ready controller is done using three buttons on the left side and a scroll wheel button on the right one. In terms of packaging, the Jumper T Pro comes inside this box, and you might notice that it carries the same slogan of the T-Lite, small but controls all. Inside the box you can find the Jumper T Pro, it comes inside a protective carrying case which is a nice add-on, you're also getting a protector for the gimbals, a very detailed quick start guide that should get you started quite easily, and an adapter for attaching an external radio module to the back of the radio controller. As for the available options, the T-Pro is available either on its own, or you can get it bundled with the new Jumper Express LRS radio transmitter and radio receiver. I'm going to feature these two on a separate video, so stay tuned, and I really hope that the Express LRS radio transmitter is going to be a good one, as the price difference between the standalone radio controller and the combo is very small, so it's going to make more sense to get the entire combo, especially if you don't have an Express LRS radio transmitter already. As for its specs, just like the more advanced version of the T-Lite, the T-Pro features the Jumper JP4 in 1, an internal multi protocol radio transmission module that will enable you to bind it with many types of radio receivers. It's also using the same whole sensor gimbals. 128 by 64 pixels monochromatic LCD screen, and it doesn't come with a micro SD card, so in order to fully enjoy its OpenTX and Audible capabilities, you'll need to obtain one separately. As for the differences between the T-Pro and the T-Lite, first of all, the T-Pro is being powered using two 18650 lithium ion batteries. The batteries are not included, so you'll need to purchase them separately, the battery bays are located behind the rubber grips on the back of the radio controller. They seem to be properly positioned, unlike on the T-Lite, where the battery was rattling inside, which could cause the radio controller to be turned off. And the batteries are connected in series, so you're not going to have any power issues when powering an external radio model. The batteries can be recharged using the USB Type-C connector, it's going to take about 12 hours to fully charge two batteries, and the charging procedure is going to be indicated by a small light on the back side of the radio controller. On the front side of the T-Pro, you can find a mount for an X-Wrap, which is something that the T-Lite didn't have. Underneath it, you can find the power button, long pressing it is going to turn it off or turn it on, and next to it, you can find trim buttons for the right and left gimbals. As I mentioned before, moving between the different options and setting them up is done using these three buttons over here and the roller wheel button. Short pressing this button is going to take you to the model setup menu and long pressing it is going to take you to the setup menu of the radio controller. Moving to the next page is done by short pressing this button and long pressing it is going to take you to the previous page. This is the return button and you'll be able to move between the different options and select an option using this clickable roller wheel. In addition, the T-Pro features eight more physical switches than the T-Lite. Over here, you can find six buttons, which each one of them can be assigned individually to a channel. 
However, only one can be turned on at a time. On its right and left sides, you can find two momentary switches, two three position switches, and two potentiometers. As for its weight, including two batteries, the T-Pro weighs about 334 grams, so it's heavier than the T-Lite and a little bit lighter than the TBS Tango 2. Now, unlike the TBS Tango 2, which has a two position switch on its side, which is protected from being accidentally pressed, the T-Pro is using momentary buttons. So in order to define the arm switch, you can either use one of the three position switches, one of the buttons on the front, which act as a toggle. You can also use the potentiometer, which is not recommended in my opinion. And actually the best option is to use a logical switch. So pressing both momentary buttons together is going to either arm or disarm your drone. Armed. Disarmed. In order to make it happen, under the model menu, navigate to the logical switches tab. Then define a logical switch, which is going to work when both momentary switches are pressed together. And you'll also need to use the sticky function, which means that these switches are going to be used as a toggle. It's also recommended to let the ready controller tell you when the drone is armed and when it is disarmed. For that, you'll need to use a micro SD card, load it with the OpenTX micro SD card contents, and then under the special functions tab, you'll be able to play a track when the logical switch that you previously defined, on my case, logical switch number two, is enabled and when it is disabled. So for example, now the logical switch is disabled, so if I'm going to enable it, the armed track is going to be played. Armed. And when I'm going to disable it, the disarm track is going to be played. Disarmed. Of course, the sticky logical switch that you defined, again, on my case, logical switch number two, needs to be assigned to a channel in order to actually use it in order for arming and disarming your drone. And I think that this is a pretty convenient method that is going to prevent you from accidentally enabling or disabling the arming switch. As for obtaining the contents of the micro SD card, head over to the OpenTX website, which is linked down below. Under download links, click the SD card link and download the latest version of the micro SD card contents from the OpenTX T-Lite folder. Then you'll need to extract the contents of the file that you just downloaded to the root folder of the micro SD card that you are going to use. So you can either copy it directly by ejecting the micro SD card and inserting it to your computer, or you can connect the T-Pro to your computer using the USB Type-C connector. And then the Reddit controller is going to prompt you whether you'd like to connect it to your computer as a joystick which will enable you to use the T-Pro for controlling flight simulators or use it as a USB storage. After selecting USB storage, your computer is going to discover two flash drives. You shouldn't use the one named T-Pro as it is used for the firmware of the ready controller and you should copy the contents of the micro SD card to the second flash drive. As for using the T-Pro along with an external radio module, it comes with a detachable nano module bay. However, unlike the T-Lite, which required you to disassemble the radio controller in order to connect the JST connector of the nano module bay to the main board, now the plug is exposed on the exterior of the radio controller. So all you have to do is to plug in the JST connector and secure the nano module bay using three Phillips screws. Since the T-Pro is being powered using a 2S battery, there is no need for a voltage regulator on the nano model bay, and you can safely set the maximum output power of the Crossfire model to 1 watt without any modifications. You should pay attention when attaching the external radio model to the nano model bay that everything aligns properly, as in my experience, the pin headers are pretty delicate and you don't want them to break like unfortunately just happened to me earlier when rushing things up. The external radio model is only going to be turned on once the radio controller is turned on and the external RF mode is configured. This version of OpenTX allows the mode to be set to crossfire slash ELRS. Now, as you can see, the model has been turned on and under the tools option, 
using the Crossfire configuration option, you'll be able to configure the Ion Nano module, the name of the Jumper Express LRS radio module. So for example, now the maximum power is set to 50 milliwatts and I can set it up to 500 milliwatts and we can see the reflected change on the LED display of the radio model. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm going to feature the Jumper Express LRS radio model in a separate review and in case you are curious about it, I was told by Jumper that although it is still not supported by the Express LRS configurator tool, it's going to be added to the supported devices soon and it uses the official Express LRS firmware. So overall, after initially testing it out, I can tell you that even though the Jumper T-Pro is not the perfect radio controller as it has some flaws, for example, unlike the antenna of the TBS Tiger 2, its antenna cannot be rotated and the antenna is also a little bit too big, so maybe on the next version they will reduce the antenna size or maybe add the option to remove it as it can be a little bit cumbersome to use both external radio model and this antenna which falls and kind of getting on its way. I also think that it could have been more user friendly if it used a two position switch on each side instead of momentary switches. And finally, in my opinion, the gimbals are a little bit too tall and it could have been better if they were lower down like on the T-Lite as it is more user friendly, especially for pinchers. Anyway, in case you're a pincher, I recommend to change these stick hands to these type of stick hands which are going to make the gimbals a little bit less tall and will provide you with a better grip. Putting these issues aside, in addition to the fact that it could have been even better if the Express LRS model was integrated into the radio controller itself, which is something the Jumper are currently working on, the Jumper T-Pro feels very good in the hands, it is not too heavy or too light, its ergonomics are good, it is definitely an upgrade over the T-Lite, and this is probably currently the best radio controller that you can get for the price of less than $100. In addition, its quality seems to be very good, but we also need to check what it looks like from the inside, and I plan to post another video in which I'm going to tear down this radio controller and also show you how to adjust the tension of the gimbals. Anyway, that's going to be it for my initial hands-on review of the Jumper T-Pro. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.